Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lyle James. Welcome to the show. Tonight we have a, a, a great show. We have an interesting guest. He's a uh, Louisville native, Mr. Chris Thieneman. Would you welcome to the sh show, Chris? Thank you, Lyle. I appreciate the, the invite back. I know this is your second time. Yeah, it's you been were, a few years. You were at the old studio. At the old studio. <laughs> now we're at the big uh, fancy one now. Yeah, well, it is better. Yeah, it is. Oh, we I, got I, a new I, desk. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, you've been through hell and back in the last couple of years. It's been a, a quite a learning experience. Now, you're a local um, uh, businessman and you ran for political office. Y yeah. And. Yes. Uh, what has I, I like to consider myself more of an activist than uh, involved in politics. I kind of run for office just to um, to bring out some things uh, that need to be talked about. Uh, right. Well, um, you were in the news a couple years ago with uh, your ex. Three years ago to almost to the day. Has it been three years? It's been three years. It takes a while to get justice. <laughs> your your ex girlfriend and you. Uh, you want to tell the story? Well, it was, uh, to make a long story short, uh, I was in a relationship that I wanted to get out of, uh, tried to get out of uh, in, a, in a normal way just by talking about it. That didn't work out. I took her to some therapists, and uh, four days before she had me arrested, uh, uh, the therapist said, now listen, because I brought her in there with me, and he said, now you've heard him. He says he would like to break up with you. And um, how do you feel? And she says, I'm not ready to break up with him, and he, I'm not going to break up with him. And uh, he's not going to uh, Jordan Tuesday. That was the whole point, to try to get her to, to uh, be okay with my trip to Jordan that I was getting to go in the Middle East during oh. the, yeah, in, uh, right at the beginning of the Syrian uh, struggle. But oh, my God. It was, it was uh, an exciting, I love to travel, so... Um, and I had met another uh, young lady in uh, the Maldives a month earlier, and um, uh, we had an open relationship. So I just said, you know, if uh, if, I, if you're really adamant about that I can't go, uh, then then we just need to, to end it. And she didn't like that. So oh, so uh, she said she told some friends that she was going to do whatever uh, she could to stop me and. The, the day before, she had me arrested. It's quite uh, extraordinary to think that you can literally just tell any officer uh, anything without any mark or anything and have someone arrested. But I, I, I was able to get out and still go to Jordan, and I got baptized in the, the River Jordan and walked the same <laughs> steps uh, as, as Jesus did. And, and uh, boy, I, it, was a, it, was, it was a wonderful experience until I came home. Oh. Well, the minute that I came home, literally the minute that I landed, because the what uh, what I had was uh, not only a disagreement with my ex, but she found a, a, a corrupt cop that um, that uh, wanted me worse than she did. But uh, they, when I got out, when we were getting off the plane, I had just landed from Jordan, I was getting off the plane, everybody was up, I was kind of uh, parked in the back of the uh, of the airplane, and, and the cops came on the plane and said, everybody get down. Get back in your seats. And they said, is Chris Thieneman here? And I was like, oh, my gosh. I said, it's me. Oh, my gosh. So they had the perp walk. I, I walked all the way, everybody staring at you, because everybody was getting their bags like, you know, why do we have to stop? So I walk all the way through the plane, and plane everybody's staring at me, and I get off, and, and the two uh, sheriffs said, you know, we're sorry that um, – we, we did this. We were just told that we had to do it this way, and, um, and this is stuff I can't even make up. It's it's crazy, and uh, so they took me to the room and said, "Here, just just sign this. I need to give you these papers." And it was only to to, to serve me some papers, but they wanted to uh, embarrass me. <laughs> oh my and god! It, it only gets worse from there. But going through this, uh, they uh, the prosecutor tried everything that she could to get me to plead to something I didn't do. I said, no, I'm ready to go to, let's, let's go to uh, 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 court. Let's go all the way. And it took three years. Now, a normal lay person who, you know, is hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck, right. would have had to have done, gone the other route. Well, uh, unfortunately, I, I've had two people, uh, literally two, uh, two men that had called me and, and thanked me for uh, standing my ground. He said that they, they couldn't do that. 
They, they were in a similar, similar situation. Mm -hmm. They uh, had to admit something they, they didn't do because they could not afford it. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally what, what, what I could have had done uh, for $5,000, I've spent well over $100,000. But I mean, it, but it's such a, when I've learned how much it's going on, mm -hmm. uh, I had to do something more about it. And that's what we're doing. We're literally, uh, we, we're sending uh, a petition to the Department uh, of Justice uh, to uh, try to hold prosecutors accountable for things, which it's never been done before because prosecutors can literally do whatever they want to anybody they want and knowingly do something and, uh, and, and have no consequence. And my friend John is a, is a, a testament to that. Hey, this is your friend you met that was on death row for 18 years. Yeah, no, I, I, I saw him on death row stories that uh, Susan Sarandon is the host of, uh, The Voice, and then Robert Redford is the executive producer. I watched this show. Uh, this guy was on, uh, did nothing other than be a black man. And uh, it was a high profile murder. They needed somebody. Um, they uh, uh, arrested him, hid all the evidence, and and uh, and uh, it took two attorneys uh, from Philadelphia to go in there and 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 save his life. Oh. And now we're 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 friends, and we're we're, he, we're working together to try to to hold prosecutors accountable because in his case, which is ten times worse, eighteen times worse well, as yeah. well. That's scary stuff. It, it is because it, it can happen, and and it's so pertinent now, in, in these times that you know. Luckily, with with uh, cable and TV and cameras, um, that that you know we can kind of even out the 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 sins of of some bad cops. Yeah, it's it's a lot of corruption all over, isn't it? Well, and and it's what's the the the, the worst part about it is that um, the good cops. Uh, once I was arrested, uh, before I, uh, I had my attorney, when I, when I was arrested, I said, I told my retired detective, I said, uh, you know, you know me, you know her. I said, look what this detective is doing. And he says, let's go talk to her right now. I said, she won't talk to me. So he takes me down to the, uh, the police station, walks me through the back. We see her. She won't come to us. He takes me down to the basement. He he talks to we talked to three uh, detectives who didn't want to talk to me, mm. but I told him the whole story. I said, "Listen, I'm waiving all my rights. I don't want my attorney. You can uh, 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 take my uh, word for now and and use it uh, for or against me. I just want you to. I want to be heard." Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I told him, I said, "I've got." two trick questions for you. And they never said a word. I said, I got two trick questions. And I had to say it a few times because I said, now, office, uh, detective, I really, this question that I'm about to ask you is a trick question. So I'm going to ask you a trick question. You, you know it's a trick question. So he, he kind of laughed. I said, do you believe in lie detector tests? He said, absolutely. They're not uh, admissible, but we would we'd love to have people that we think did something wrong take a lie detector test. I said, well, I took one from an FBI man, passed, a, I never touched the girl, I passed, and I'll, I'll do it again for you. And uh, so he just sat there, and then I said, I got another trick question for you. I said, um, if, if a guy that you think did something wanted to come in, waive all his rights, meet with you, would you want to meet with him? He said, I would go pick him up. I would drop what I was doing to go get him. I said, well, your, your detective, Amy Phelps, refused to talk to me, didn't want to talk to me. Didn't want to know the truth, and uh, so uh, he. Uh, they listened to me. They walk me and my uh, my. Uh, I had another witness with me. Walked us to the door, and uh, I don't know if we can say this on cable, but he walked to the door and whispered. He says, "We know that she's a bitch, but <laughs> but I, there's nothing we can do about it." And you know, I guess kind of wanting me to feel better about that. That well, we know you're, she's bad, but you know, there's nothing we can do about it. So instead of what, what I feel like police officers are supposed to be looking out for the, the citizens, for justice, they, they put us second. They're going to they're gonna cover themselves. And that's that blue code that my other friend, my former chief of police of Seattle that I've flown out to visit, who's got a, 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 a great book. It's How to Fix America's Police. Now, this oh. is a guy that was the chief of police when um, 
uh, Nirvana, the, uh, that guy, uh, uh, died. Uh, what, what was his name? You remember? Mm. The lead singer for Nirvana? Oh, Kurt, Kurt Cobain. Yeah, yeah. Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that uh, his officers uh, uh, did a lot of things wrong, but but uh, and uh, he said, but now he wants to make some rights that that he did. It's it's a great. I have tons of notes in there, but I wanted to make an offer to any of your list, your your uh, your uh, fans out there. I'll buy the book if you promise to read it and email me and tell me what you feel. But uh, th or these you, are or you can email me either one. Either. Yeah, allow. Uh, LyleJanes at Hotmail.com and your email and, and is... Chris at Thienemann.com. Yeah. But uh, these guys are, are uh, pros. I mean, he learned the hard way to be a pro from 18 years in death row, John Thompson. Yeah, here's the one called Killing Time. Killing here. Time. And uh, so uh, uh, he spent eight, 18 years uh, um, behind bars for something he literally did not do. And then the chief of police... Uh, he's, he's literally had co uh, police officers... Uh, threatening him mm. because of what he's writing. He's basically just having a tell-all book about the police. So it's interesting. I mean, I've learned it's been a you know I, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Maybe some somebody that I really disliked what I had to go through, but I wouldn't wish this on any of my friends. But it's 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 uh, taught me. Um, I love to to be a community activist, and this is my next one. You know, forget the library tax. Forget the my fight with MSD, the Planning Commission, all those ones that, that I've been very active in and, and trying to change. But this is the one that I, this is affects people's lives and families. Absolutely it does. That, it's really frightening that that, that can happen to. Well, you know, uh, it, it's, uh, when I talk to a lot of my uh, uh, white friends, you know, they, they, it, they find it very hard to believe until they actually take the time to listen to me because we weren't brought up that way. Right, exactly. And then I talked to the, uh, my African-American friends. You know, uh, my wife is African-American. I talked to her family, and, and I see that this is just part of the culture that they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. I remember, uh, if we have time, a, a, qu a quick great story uh, uh, to give you an idea of what it felt like. I was at the UofL basketball game with my, with my wife, and uh, this was after they had me arrested twice for no reason. And, and we proved it. And, uh, but in the corner of my eye, I see two officers walking towards me. And our, and our seats are lower level, but very back to the, to the walkway. And everybody's standing, cheering for the game, and I see these two police officers. And I said, oh, my God. I said, I didn't do anything wrong. I just, just started panicking. I said, they're coming after me. I said, why? Are, I didn't do anything. And I sit down, and she says, what? what? I said, I, I'm getting arrested. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, look. And they walked right past me but just the fact and I, and my <laughs> wife says you know what no uh and i understand your um it, it's it's your your uh laugh but it wasn't really uh, no no i know. know i know i'm not but she said she said she uh, made a point she said you know what now you have a little idea what it's like to be a black man mm. and i was like wow if that's if that's how the, how they feel and it can it really gets me worked up i mean, I'm I mean sure. I've, I've had m many uh uh, tearful nights, but uh, sure. but to think that that you live and you look at a, an officer and you think that this man is going to arrest you just for w no reason, mm -hmm. it happens. And 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 I won't stand. I'm, I'm going to do my part, my little world, yeah. to try to uh, bring light to it. And I appreciate you. Just oh sure. Well, the chance. good good thing that came out of all this is that you met this woman that you fell in love with. Well, yeah, and she, you got married, and yep. you have a beautiful daughter. Well, thank you. Yeah, I got now I got three beautiful girls, but uh, three daughters. But uh, yeah, we were uh, we we met uh, during our the transition. With you know, she knew that I wanted to get out of this relationship, and I was just dating other uh, other uh, women. And mm -hmm. and uh, at this time, um, she even knew that uh, that I was going to Jordan to see another girl because I've always been honest. I just tell I tell them I said, listen, I don't want to hide. I'm going to go. Uh, uh, see a woman in Jordan. This uh, Nikki, my wife, is from Chicago. I, oh, and uh, you know, I was wondering if that's the woman that was in. Yes. <laughs> so she's uh, uh, and then uh, my ex girlfriend is calling her for advice, and and, and in, in trial she's saying, "He's a grown man. He's told you where he's going. <laughs> he can go. He's not married. He can see whoever he wants to. Let him be." And she said, "Well, I think we should stop him." And. Uh, she tried. But <laughs> She's got some issues, doesn't she? Uh, she does. Yeah, and and and, and but I'm I'm uh, I'm 
I've been trying to, I've reached out to, to Christopher 2X and some other uh, 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 police liaisons to try to get an appointment with the chief uh, because they have firsthand uh, oh, contact okay. with him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go myself Monday since I, uh, he, he hasn't responded because I want him to know from me what they're doing. I mean, I want him to know that, that we have, you know, I took the tape of the, uh, the trial. The, uh, the prosecutor lied three times, uh, and, and, and amazing story. The, in, the last word, how valuable the last word is. If you get a prosecutor who knows that they can't get in trouble, uh, whatever they say, and they know that, that nobody is going to have a word after they say, the, uh, she's literally telling the, uh, the, the jury that, do you really think that this uh, uh, Nikki Cooper who's never met this woman, would have talked to her the night before uh, she has him arrested? Now, if she would have asked during the trial, we would have had phone records. And she said, doesn't that sound uh, odd? And then she uh, did the same thing. She accused my attorney of planting uh, our uh, key witness who was there from day one. And how we found him was from the media. The media interviewed him, and the cops never did. And, and she said, where do they find this uh, Mexican uh, after three years? And we weren't, we weren't able to say, well, the media had him uh, that same day. But, uh, but she knew because we had given her uh, our witness people. And, and, uh, but they wanted to give that, that word to the jury, that, 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 uh, that doubt. And, uh, but luckily, they saw through everything. Well, I know uh, <clears throat> the Courier-Journal gave you hell, didn't they? Well, they, they were always waiting for that. I, I was, I was, I was warned by uh, uh, Jerry Mayor Abramson's uh, little henchman Jim McGovern when I was fighting him over the um, these low-income housing bonds. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of neighbors or folks that have an issue, they'll contact me because they know that I'll stand up for them. And and there was these low-income housing bonds that he was trying to sneak in into Valley Station. Oh. And I went up to him uh, at uh, Iroquois. And uh, had my group with them, and, and uh, Jim McGovern said, uh, "We're going to get you. One day, we're going to get you." Oh I my said, God! And Go ahead. he wasn't kidding, was he? <laughs> but you know, I, I, I'm I'm ready for it. I knew it, and uh, you know, I, uh, the, uh, but the only thing I can say is that I've always told the truth. And anytime I've tried to uh, debate uh, the mayor on those low-income housing bonds over the uh, MSD. And even the most public one was the uh, library tax. Mm -hmm. I did everything I could to uh, to debate him on that, but he didn't want to because he knew he wasn't being truthful. And and luckily we had en just enough time to get the folks to realize what the truth was. And that's what I'm. That uh, all of that has trained me to get me to this point in life to where I, because this is a big challenge to to uh, to go absolutely uh, to the, uh, the 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 police officers who I. I grew up uh, believing in uh, a thousand percent. I've even had uh, officers now that that uh, are upset with me for uh, uh, telling my side of the story when uh, you know that uh, uh, when they know they said, "Yeah, we know all about that detective, but why are you doing this to us? You're going to hurt all of us." I said, "So you would rather just uh, sacrifice an innocent man, me, and forget about?" The truth, just because of officers that um, might be in danger now because of of uh, some corrupt cop. Well, I told him I said, "Why don't you just go after the corrupt cop, and uh, let's get rid of the corrupt cop?" Is let's, she still a detective? No, actually, uh, from what I've told, I'm trying to find this out. I offered, I offered her a thousand dollars a question to her uh, favorite charity if she would take a lie detector test. She hasn't uh, offered that. Uh, I've been told that she was asked to, uh, basically given a choice to uh, retire or, or you're going you're gonna to be fired. Oh. The other officer who uh, 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 did uh, not quite as bad as uh, Detective Phelps, but just as almost as bad, she's, they, she got demoted to, she's a uh, school resource officer now. They moved, oh, get out. Yeah, really? took wow. her off the street and... <laughs> <laughs> and put her in a, so now she can uh, take care of some uh, middle school, um, which is, you know, instead of firing, maybe she'll be great at, at controlling <laughs> some middle school Well, that's kids. a living hell in itself. <laughs> yeah, no, let her, let her go there. But, did you, uh, change the subject, did you go to UK or you? you... I, pl I played football for Coach Nellenberger and, uh, uh, at Louisville. And, uh, and we were just talking about it the other day is that 
I remember in 1985, he said, guys, he said, uh, this organization, this university is, is on its way. We are heading for a national championship. You guys are not going to be part of it. I mean, be there, but one day you're going to be a part. You're going to be able to say that you started the foundation of it. You know, you're going to have to take pride in fighting these rough uh, seasons and these rough times and, 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 and all your blood and sweat and, and tears uh, will be uh, 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 towards that goal. And, uh, I mean, he's been – he's a heck of a co – he, he was a hell of a coach. I mean, it, it, he, he couldn't uh, coach uh, the way he did uh, back then today because they kind of they kind of <laughs> baby the guys now. Uh. I mean, we, we, we would get two cups of water uh, for a three-hour practice. Oh, my God. And then uh, <laughs> they would dump the water out in the field – uh, uh, we get a, a, a break. They dump all the water out, and then if they caught you grabbing pieces of ice when you're thirsty, they would run you after practice. Oh my! Woo! Oh, I'm telling you, we have, <laughs> I have plenty of good stories on that. But it, it was it was tough. We we fought the war for them, so I feel like that. And this is U of L. Louisville, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, uh, really interesting. We had a guy that uh, uh, that uh, had you know uh, his kidneys collapsed and ended oh up being in. Probably never was on the news back then, but uh, he had to go to the hospital and, and get that. Because, you know, if you, you can't not give somebody water. Right. I mean, yeah. so now it's, you know, they, they give it to everybody. But we had two cups of water at practice. <laughs> wow. For a three-hour Shelby campus practice in the heat of August. Mm -mm. We'd come in because we would hide each other. We'd be grabbing uh, ice. And, and, uh, and when coaches would say, is anybody looking? And, and uh, no, no, you grab it. And I'd have mud and grass in my mouth. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and um, but uh, he said th we're going to make it as close to being in war, which uh, I, I don't compare it to war. I, I, no, I, but no. he said I'm going to make it as uh, as difficult as you can ever imagine uh, right. life would be. But uh, that's a whole different level. Yeah, and, yeah sure no, it is. But uh, but he made it hell. He made it. Uh, but but I have you know. I can I can laugh about it now as I drink my uh, my H two O. That's right. So your plans uh, now, my after, plans. After, after all this is over, is to go around and try to help other folks. As Absolutely, I'm I'm helping John. I'm uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, bring uh, uh, the chief in. Whether whether our chief uh, wants to talk to him or not, I'm gonna bring. He's gonna have a book signing. Um, Norm now, Stamper. I, so. I, oh, good. Well, I've asked uh, I've asked uh, the uh, police to come on the show before, but they uh, they always respectfully decline. So yeah, well, I, <laughs> not yeah. about this. No, just, no, right, yeah. right. No, I mean, it's uh, it's time that they talk. So two good books to get. One Real stories. Killing Time. This is about a, a man who was on death row for 18 years. 18 years. And finally, they finally were able to uh, prove that he didn't do or wasn't even involved in any way, shape, or form. And then this one is about. That's the that's the John Thompson. That's the 18 years. And then yeah, the, uh, yeah. And the blue one is is uh, which it's not blue for uh, by accident, but you know they talk about the blue code of where the officers keep silent for the right. for the bad cops. Mm. They don't want to. Uh, they don't want to bring those up. But um, are these mine to have? I'll I'll get you all my all my little notes are in that. Oh, okay. Well, you get. Me I've one. got another one in the car. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I want to read them. <laughs> yeah, I would love for you to. I'd love to t discuss it with you. Yeah, absolutely. And have a, have a book reading because I I told you I'm I'm gonna uh, buy everybody anybody that wants to read it. I'm, That's right. My offer stands. ChrisThieneman.com and he'll get you a book. Chris at Thieneman.com. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Chris at and or LyleJanes at Hotmail.com, uh, and I'll I'll let him know that you're interested in the book. So. Yeah, great. Maybe I uh, look forward to it. So uh, I appreciate the, the opportunity, Lyle. It's always a well, pleasure. I'm, I hope I'm I, glad that things, hope I wasn't too boring for no, you. No, I'm glad you you got through this uh, horror yeah, story. But yeah, but we're we're on to the uh, we're we're still fighting. I'm I'm. I'm uh, suing them now, so uh, and it might take another three years. But oh, well, I, absolutely. Yeah. But but you yeah. know, look how quick the three years goes. It and maybe and not you won't me, see that in the Courier Journal. No, we won't. <laughs> we won't. But I'll, I'll I'll do my part to make sure everybody knows about it. Absolutely. I'll come back on your show. Sure, you will. Maybe next time we'll be um, uh, on a net, another network. There you go. We're trying anyway. But okay. 
But anyhow, until uh, next time, uh, thanks for being on the yeah, show, thank Chris. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. And um, 18 years now on uh, Time Warner Cable Access. Next year, our new uh, name will be Spectrum Cable. And I sure thank you for watching the show, folks. Uh, it's been wonderful. Great having Chris on tonight. And what have I been saying now for almost 18 years? It's nice to be important, but more important to be nice. Until next time, y'all have a good night. Thank you.